So hello, this is probably going to be the first clip for week two of the Trick or Treat Readathon vlog. Spoiler alert, it is like Sunday before we go live on the live stream. So I have not read anything since, um, really since, since I last updated you. There hasn't been really anything to like update you on. As for reading, I haven't read any more of Beckoning Blood. Probably when you finish that, either before the live stream or during that. So I will update you um, whenever that happens, probably tomorrow. Let, let's, not, let's not lie to ourselves. So yeah. Otherwise, not a whole lot to like update you on, but here I am opening the vlog. Um, I don't think I've read anything else like at all besides like academic journals for our school. So trust me, nothing ex nothing exciting there. But um, they've been read, so I can write a paper that I need to rewrite, and I haven't started doing that um, because I don't want to. So probably going to be doing that late at night because I like to procrastinate, I guess. So yeah, there's that. And I think in my Gothic literature class, we're starting The Haunting of Hill House. So I'll probably be updating you on that as well. So there's that to look forward to. And besides that, this is like midterm. So it's just like time for midterm writing. That's about, that's about it. Hey, it's me, TB. And so it has been a while since my last update. I think it's been a week. It may, maybe more. I'm not sure because I've not gone back to edit that clip I filmed, which you just saw. So this vlog will now confess like weeks two and three. It is like Monday the 18th, I think. So this is technically week three. And the reason for a lack of like clips from last week is because I had midterms that week. So like Monday to Wednesday, I was busy doing that shit. So I wasn't like reading a lot anyway. So I did not really have time to like film and edit shit then because I was busy. So that's why. And then on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I had another midterm I had to write. So there was that. As a whole, I was just so burned out that I didn't want to do fucking anything, so I did not do anything. So now for what I read in that span of time, the audiobooks or whatever, I'm gonna go ahead and like summarize things that aren't part of a series or like I guess it's a good way to like start it off. Um, so I finished and started The Haunting of Hill House. Um, I don't know if I talked about this at all, um, but I read this for my gothic literature class. I'm pretty sure I read it throughout the entirety of last week. It is a thing like slight, like it is less than 200 pages, so it was pretty quick to read on basically this is like what the Netflix series is based off of, but it's like completely different. There are four people that go to this house called Hill House, of course, and our main character Eleanor is like not mentally well, we will say. And so she goes to this house, um, it's very spooky and shit, and weird events start happening. Also, it is like less supernatural than you're probably expecting. It's very, is more focused on like the internal thoughts and feelings of Eleanor, though there are hints of like a, you know, FF relationship between Eleanor and Theodora, Nothing like happens, but it is like really heavily hinted towards at least how like the book kind of ends and wraps up. It kind of like almost upends the rest of the book because of how things kind of like play out. It's weird to explain. Basically, the final chapters kind of like show that the events in this book are kind of like um, maybe didn't happen, maybe they did. So you kind of have to like interpret that however you want. I think that what this book did really, really well is that when you get the reveal about what I just said, it kind of happens that like the entire book becomes very like questionable because you have no idea what is really happening, what isn't. It's kind of like very weird to read, I guess. Even though I think that it worked really well, like you do feel like completely destabilized while reading this because like you don't have anything to like hold on to because like nothing feels real at all. So yeah, there's that. I'm pretty sure I give this four stars um, just because like the ending, while I did like it, I did like what it was doing. I think that the final, the final paragraph really like fucks it up for me. Like it feels so weirdly out of place. I would personally just like rewrite the last like page or two to make it work better, but that's just me. And in this spooky house, there are like doors that close on their own. The house is built in a very weird way. There are strange banging sounds, but still a lot of that only happens like once you get like close to the halfway point. So again, it really is just more focused on like the characters more than like the actual like spookiness. So yeah, going to that expecting like minimal spookiness compared to what you are expecting. And again, this is like nothing compared to the Netflix series. So there's that. Then yesterday I finished The Night Wanderer by Drew Hayden Taylor. And this takes place on the, this takes place on the Otter Lake First Nation, which I think is fictional, but I might, but I might be totally wrong. Basically we're following our main character, Tiffany. However, there are like kind of like multiple, multiple perspectives. But they aren't like as big as Tiffany's and our mysterious stranger. And basically this mysterious stranger is kind of like returning to this First Nation because that's where he is from originally but he's not been there in a very long time. You know, it isn't like directly said, it's pretty obvious that this mysterious stranger is a vampire. And over the course of the novel, we kind of get his backstory as well as what is going on 
with Tiffany and what is going on in her life there. I'm gonna end up giving this a three stars just because like it's really hard to like pick it up again after I read the first chunk. I think I think it read it the, the last chunk like my first bit on the last Sunday so it's been a while. It takes a while to actually get going. This is already pretty short. I think this is like slightly over 200 pages so it isn't like long by any means. So like the beginning part which just felt so slow by comparison I guess. So yeah there's that. I'm gonna do like the final like ending chapters. I'm um, old enough to like really like it was enough for me to like heavily recommend this I guess. Like yeah it was spooky but I don't know it just felt kind of like weirdly put together at least for me anyway. I do like the interactions between our mystery stranger and Tiffany. It is not a romance by any means um so don't go in expecting like a romance. They are just like friends I guess or peers maybe um but they're not like romantically involved. So there's that and they do kind of like have a few good conversations. I do think that Tiffany's growth is very like you know interesting to read but again it was just a three stars for me. And this is actually for the readathon this fit the prompt for the raven which is to read a book with a black cover. So here's like the um, hardcover itself and then the disc jacket is also black so it works. And I also finished Beckoning Blood by Daniel DeLorne. This is also for one of my prompts I think for the prompt about a, a toxic relationship. It was also for my Queer Audio Book Club which is a book club I host so link down below. So this book I think I started it last week but only got around to finishing it like maybe like the last vlog I mean um but I only got around finishing it like on Thursday, Wednesday, somewhere around there. So um this is like very dark. It is a dark romance pretty much because we are following two brothers Olivier and Thierry and they're both vampires and Olivier is very like toxic and possessive over Thierry so it kind of like, takes place like three separate time periods um as we're following Olivier kind of like fucking up Thierry's life and yeah um there's like a lot of death a lot of like bodies being pulled apart. Um, there's also a rape scene so there's that and then yeah so it's like a whole dark time pretty much but I will say I did really like it and I ended up giving it five stars. One of the ones that's kind of like hard to like talk about a lot without like giving the spoilers because like of how it's structured with the three separate time periods I mean so like it's kind of like weird to talk about but yeah there's also kind of like a past life soulmate kind of thing going on so if you like that there's that. Yeah, it's like very bloody gory violent stuff like that though it does end in a happily for now I would say like it's not a happily ever after but the main couple is kind of like happily and protected pretty much because it's part of a trilogy and in this trilogy every book kind of, is kind of following like its own separate couple so we're good and there isn't any incest even though it probably sounds like there's gonna be incest but there isn't like there's no incest going on so don't go in expecting that I guess or at least don't be worried about that I guess it's also a good thing to say. But the smut was great so there's that. Can you think of anything else I need to say about this? I did like it. I do kind of want to finish off this trilogy at some point so there's that and yeah so yeah it was a sexy bloody time pretty much. But then I finished three Suki Stackhouse novels the audiobook because like I'm trash pretty much so two of them were four stars and one was five stars because it was great but this is altogether dead from dead to worse and dead and gone. I'm like approaching the like finish line for the series because there are 13 books I think and Dead and Gone is book 9 so I have like 10, 11, 12, 13 left so yay. Obviously I'm really liking it still but I've heard that the end of the series is pretty like shit so yeah there's that. I think overall this like these last few books were like really good it's just that um, I think it was from dead to worse there are like so many like major plot threads that kind of like get like wrapped up here but they're all like so big that like it doesn't make sense for me wrapped up as fast as they are so yeah that's kind of like a bleh part for that. Yeah overall I'm so liking my time with it. We are following Sookie Stackhouse who is a telepathic waitress and one day after meeting her first vampire Bill because she, she gets kind of like wrapped up into paranormal shenanigans. Usually um there's always end up in a lot of people dying. There is like a lot of like death in here so yeah like I think like someone dies almost every book so there's like a lot of like death and char characters coming and going so there's that and it isn't like just vampires. There are also like witches, werewolves, just like general shifters and stuff. I'm um, thinking like anything else but I think that's like the main three things like shifters, vampires, and witches. There are also like fairies and like other creatures but most of them are like very much like not as present or very like minor characters compared to like the other main three groups pretty much. So listen I'm still liking them. I know everyone else is like kind of like eh on them but listen I'm still liking them. The occasional smut is very nice. I like how our romances are going. I like the way our like side characters are kind of like being handled though I do wish we saw like more of some of them but still overall a great time because these are like books like seven eight nine I can't really talk about a lot of them like separately so I think where I'm at right now Quinn has been kind of like gotten rid of because like they've like broken up which sucks because Quinn is like Sookie's like best boyfriend so far but it's kind of like out of the running now because of like plot points but listen I liked Quinn but I can see why Sookie left him because of like 
how she is as a character so it, it makes sense to me though it does hurt it does it does hurt a lot so now on to what i'm reading right now i am reading lord of eternal night to the buddy read with therese and nicole um, i think therese has already finished it i don't think nicole has still been busy with school i'm at like 20 percent into it i'm liking it so far but i don't think we've gotten to like the actual like romance has started um because it's a vampire beauty and the beast retelling so there's that it is really short which is what i'm worried about because it is like only slightly over 300 pages so i'm like i don't know how we're gonna do all this plot work so it's such like a short page count but i guess we shall see i'm expecting good smut not sure to like talk about besides that armored characters kind of like sent there to kill the vampire because the vampire is kind of like i guess like requires sacrifices so armored character goes there and just got it as a sacrifice to kill him on the full moon but of course you know if romance is gonna happen so yeah it's gonna be great and i guess i shall update you hopefully for real <laughs> um whenever i read more so yeah i shall tell you more when that happens so it is Wednesday at like midnight almost. It's like 11.33, so technically it is not Thursday. So we're good. So first and foremost, this isn't like for the readathon at all, but I did finish Blood of Elves, which is part of the Witcher series. I'm giving it three stars just because like it is like good, but like it is a lot of like political intrigue and like build up to stuff. So it isn't like, like stuff isn't like physically happening. It's just like them talking and telling, which I don't mind. It's just... For like, for like 300 pages to like not have anything like major happen but very like weird i guess again it wasn't like bad by any means it was just like a different experience i guess and it's made me like realize how much i like i love yennefer so much because she's just great and her interactions with siri are just fantastic amazing love them i might end up continuing on in a series because i do only have like five books left in the series and they're all like pretty much this size anyway so it's like they shouldn't be that long to get through you know and then um I also am like over halfway, I think, through Lord of Eternal Night. I'm liking it, liking it a lot more than I was when I first started. I noticed this and I mentioned it to like Therese, but there's like this weird like jump in it where like they go from like the tension between them, like we know they're gonna end up fucking, but we're not like there yet because they did, because they just met, kind of like don't like each other. So there's like that tension, right? And it kind of like, goes away almost immediately and then they kind of like go into love or like lust, I guess, because they're, like, they're kissing and fucking, which don't, don't get me wrong, the smut was very nice. I didn't like the smut very much, but. Um, I just want like more like put up between like them first meeting and then jumping to love. Like I don't think I would not say it was like insta lovey, but just like there's like that put up between like between the tension of like them not liking each other to like love almost. If that makes sense. There isn't like that like sweeping arc up to it, I guess. Which is weird because like this was self published, I think. So obviously like he could have added more to it. And the book is already like pretty short as is. So I wonder if like something was cut. Like during the editing process, I did like kind of like added to this, and it wasn't like added back or something, because it feels like it should have been that like romance like arc, or like or like more to it, I guess. Obviously, I have more to go, so like I'm sure maybe that question will be like more fully addressed. Maybe I don't know. Um, so far it is sitting at like a four stars, maybe depending on how the like book ends, it might change. I don't know. I just wish it was longer because like, I don't know why it's so short. It's like slightly over 300 pages and like why not just make it longer to like add more depth to this like relationship anyway I don't, I don't get it but yeah there's that and you know while i have you here i might as well do a book haul because i don't want to do one in a separate video so here we are first i have the raven lady by sherilyn fisher it's like book two in the fairy history series because i read i think book one last year at some point so this is basically like a fey romance series that takes place in an alternate world like ireland was never like ireland basically never became part of england and so we're in like these so we are in this version of a 19th century island where like the fae exist and it is like through the fae pretty, pretty much that the country is kind of like controlled basically so on this one we are following um well our hero is duncan o'malley who is a smuggler and but he is the cousin to queen is old and she and he's basically told that he has to become the king of the realm of fairy king finvara and he's told that he has to wed the princess of the Fae's like enemy and basically he has to marry basically like this uh this princess of the shadow elves and he doesn't want to so it basically gives her the cold shoulder and basically she gets offended by his rejection and she also learns a plot to kind of like i guess get rid of him or something like that and i assume you know romance is going to ensue between these two people that don't i don't like each other it'll be great so yeah and i love this because i think the first book will be there are four or five stars so that'll be great then I have Trailer Park Trickster by David R. Slayton. This is like book two in the Adam Binder Chronicles, which again, I read book one, I think last year at some point. Um, basically, the series is basically following our character Adam Binder, who is like 
kind of like a weak witch who doesn't have like a lot of power to him. Um, but he's basically asked to investigate a problem in his brother's city. It's like a whole backstory between them. Basically, they are not on like the best of terms. He goes there and shit kind of hits the fan, um, obviously. And book two's kind of picking up on how book one ended on a cliffhanger. Um, so yeah, it's gonna hurt because how book one ended. But yeah, here we are. Also for both of these, I am planning on maybe doing like a reading vlog in November or like maybe December, kind of like rereading some of my favorite books from last year and reading the sequels because there are a lot of sequels coming out this year from like my favorite books from last year. So I can, you know, get through those, get through like these sequels, also kind of like refresh myself on what happened. So it'll be great. And also on that front, I bought some books from Lefe Press, which is like the same press that did um, Jesus and John, which is a book I reviewed like a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, and basically, I got Burly Tales, which is kind of like fairy tales featuring like big hairy men, so like bears basically, you know? So yeah, there's this. And I think they're like, whatever, they're like 10 or more like fairy tale retellings featuring Harry Man instead. So that'd be great. Then I have Gents, um, Steamy Stories from the Age of Steam. These are all like funny stories that take place during the Victorian era. So yeah, that's my little book haul for you. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I bought recently, but I don't think so anyway. Um, I might just be crazy. But yeah, um, I should update you tomorrow, which is Thursday, which should be the last day of this vlog. So yeah. So hey, this is going to be my last update clip thingy for the vlog because it's like almost midnight. I haven't even started um, editing the last clip. So I should probably get on editing that if I want to go live tomorrow. So um, today's Thursday and the only thing that I remember reading was, I think the only thing I finished reading was Lord of Eternal Night. I finally finished that. I ended up giving it four stars, um, mostly because of what I already knew was gonna be a problem, which was the length. Um, it's just that, like it, it was a good book, don't get me wrong. I just needed more length to kind of like go into more depth about a few things. I do still recommend it. It's just that to give that extra oomph, it did need to be longer, you know? I haven't really started reading reading anything else. So I'm kind of going into the next week with like zero things going on, basically. So that's great. No idea what I'll read next for the readathon. I'm thinking of starting Frankenstein in Baghdad because it's like decently short, you know? Which basically means the last like week will be me trying to make it through like two big ass fantasy books. So no idea how that's going to go. But we're going to, you know, hope and pray and just hope that God decides to take pity on me. Even though I have a project due, like, on Monday that I haven't even started yet. So, this could only go badly, but um, that's kind of how I live my life at this point. So, yeah, I think I'm going to close out the vlog here. So, thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, like, share, all that. And hopefully I will see you next week.